I'm gonna to talk today about a mindset that affects so many business owners, especially newer ones, but even some who've been operating a painting business, striping business for many years might still be struggling with this mindset. So I'm gonna talk about a little bit about what the scarcity mindset is and why I think if you can overcome that, which is not easy, I still fight it to this day, but if you can overcome a scarcity mindset, you could rapidly grow your business. In fact, I think this simple adjustment into how you approach sales and the product that you're offering and the service you're offering, a, a slight change in your approach can have a drastic effect in your sales business and really help you to grow and scale your striping business or your asphalt maintenance, asphalt maintenance business. So thank you for listening today. If you're on YouTube, would love it if you dropped a like and subscribe down below. Mucho apreciato. And then for those on uh, all the other places, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, give us a review, really helps. So thank you for that. So let's get right into it because it's going to be a little shorter today. Um, the scarcity mindset, when I when I first heard the term scarcity mindset, I legit didn't even know what it meant. Um, I heard people talking about it. I've seen it online. So I actually asked my business coach because he would talk about it a lot too. Like, what what is this scarcity mindset thing you always talk about? And it's very, very simple. It's a mindset that business owners, especially of newer service companies, uh, tend to struggle a lot with. And the mindset is that there's not enough work out there to sustain the business. So they always have to make sure that they're making decisions based on, I need to get as much work as possible because the work might run out. Or in other words, you think that the market is scarce. And so you need to do some drastic things to get work in your business. This was me like a hundred percent. So when I started my business in 2018, uh, just me, solopreneur, no employees. Like I, I was getting jobs any way possible. So yeah, I put in a lot of effort to go find jobs, but when it came to like, you know, the the price discussion and negotiating, like I was terrified of losing jobs, which was really silly looking back on it because I had a full time job. Like I was just striping to make extra money, but just the idea of getting rejected on a proposal led me to often discount my work. Uh, char undercharge people set a really low minimum charge price because I, I just wanted to get the work. Now, I think it's super important to differentiate when you're a newer company. Yes, there is an element in a new company of acquiring customers. So what I mean is you might have to be a little less expensive than somebody who's been in business for two decades because the name of your game is to try and get known, get people to know who you are, to like you, trust you so that you can build a business relationship with them. But often what I see happening, what I really struggled with too, was you operate from that mindset that I need this work because there isn't enough out there. And I think this time of year, especially like we're recording this in September, as it works, you know, tends to slow down in most markets if you're a striping only company, um, especially if you're in a place like Canada or, or a place where it snows a lot, like the time, the, the season's running down. And so you might think, man, I, like, I got to get work in because I'm going to be running out of work soon. And that's when that scarcity mindset kicks in. And as the business owner or a salesperson, you start making less than ideal decisions with your proposals because you think that you need it. And this affects almost every brand new business owner. Like if you have experience within a pre-existing business, maybe this doesn't affect you but nearly every business owner suffers from this. And I've personally seen it with, with some other contractors that we've worked with or ones that I've talked with. There are some business owners who've been doing this for many, many years and still struggle with the idea of having a proposal rejected. And so they do things like discount their services or basically even just in their conversations or their emails or whatever way they're communicating with their potential clients, they're, they're demonstrating that mindset that I need this work. And so one of the best pieces of advice that I've, I've ever heard, and I can't honestly remember where it actually comes from. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was a Ryan Stuman quote. I can't remember, but basically I think it was Ryan Stuman. He said, sell like you've got a million dollars in your bank account. End quote. Like that was it. Sell like you have a million dollars in your bank account. So if you're just starting a brand new striping business, or if you've been in business for a few years, you don't have a million dollars in your bank account. The business checking account is probably quite low. But what would you do as a business owner or salesperson if you had a million dollars in your bank account? 
Think about that. Think about some, you know, proposals that you've done over the years where you know that you sold yourself short. You know that you discounted your services. You know that you gave somebody a deal. And maybe the job went good or maybe it went bad. Because a lot of times those jobs that are discounted often don't go well, especially if you get yourself into trouble with not being profitable. So the idea of that quote, sell like you've got a million dollars in your account, is to help you think that if you operated from a mindset that you didn't need this project, you didn't need this sale to survive, what impact would that have on your business? And the reality is some people might think that that's kind of an arrogant or pretentious thing to say because you might now go into your conversations with your clients with your with your chest puffed out thinking man I don't need you but that's not the point the point is are you comfortable enough in your business do you have solid business fundamentals do you have a plan do you know your profitability numbers do you know what your minimum charge should be and your average project value and the amount of projects you need to sell so that you don't make those scarcity decisions and discount your services for no reason or otherwise make other bad decisions that directly affect the profitability of your company. And so if you had that million dollars in your bank account, you would naturally be more confident in your abilities. You would be more comfortable with the idea of somebody saying no. And a big reason why this whole scarcity mindset, at least for me, and I I know for others as well, because I've talked with them and, and they've been interviewed on podcasts and how they used to operate a big, a big root cause of this scarcity mindset for so many in the, in the contracting space is that they, they just feel like there's just not enough work out there, but it's actually the total opposite. And, and when you're in the business, when you're in the trenches day to day, you can easily lose sight of the fact that at any given moment, there is somebody in your market like literally right now, as you're listening to this or watching this, literally right now, there is somebody in your market who could benefit from your service, but just doesn't know who you are yet. And that is a hundred percent true. Unless there's like four feet of snow on the ground and you, you only do painting, in which case maybe not. But at this moment, there is somebody who doesn't know who you are, or maybe forgot about who you are, who could use your services. But what happens in the mindset of a scarcity business owner is when the work starts to slow down, this happens a lot with, you know, owner operators, one man companies, especially, you know, they do a lot of sales work. So maybe they, 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 they batten the hatches, they button down, they do like one to two weeks of really hardcore sales work. They email people, they phone people, they visit people, they they set appointments, they, they book projects and now it's time to fulfill the projects. And then they go boom, 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 boom. And they do all of these projects and then there's nothing left in the sales pipeline because they've been so busy fulfilling the work that now they don't have any future work in the pipeline, as we say, to keep the business going. And so they'll often revert back to that scarcity sales mindset. Like, oh my goodness, I need work like right now because there's nothing in the pipeline. And then they start selling like crazy, but because they feel like they need the work, they start discounting their service. They start working with not ideal clients, clients that don't align with how the business is supposed to grow, whether that's a cheap client, a client who won't treat them well, etc. And so overcoming that mindset that I need work in order to keep going is a difficult one. But when your mind shifts from operating in that that basically like fear of not having enough work and instead realizing that there is somebody right now who could benefit from your services can really help you in your business grow and scale because it is almost impossible, almost impossible. I mean, you can't quantify this. There's no data, but almost impossible for a business to really grow and scale quickly or at any level. If the business owners operating from that mindset of there's not enough work. And so how do you overcome that scarcity mindset? I think it stems from two things in particular. Number one, remember that fact that there is always somebody in your market just doesn't know who you are or forgot who you are, but you could, uh, or sorry, they could benefit from your services. There's always somebody out there. Um, Sometimes we forget who they are. Sometimes we don't keep good track of things, but there is always somebody out there. So even if you are, you know, looking for work, you don't have a lot of projects in the pipeline to fulfill. 
and then you get a couple rejections on your proposals, then you start to panic a little bit, right? Well, don't panic because there is always somebody out there who could benefit from you and your company. They just don't know who you are yet. But the second thing to help you overcome that mindset of needing the work and not having enough is start keeping really good track and records and notes of your sales opportunities. So in a previous episode of the podcast, I think it was, I don't know, it was somewhere in the twenties. Just go back and find it. It won't be on the YouTube, but um, I did an episode about the value of a CRM or a client relationship management software, which is, if you listen to the episode, is just a super fancy way of saying a database of people that you know. And now most CRMs will allow you to track, you know, your clients, you know, subcontractors, referral partners, all that stuff. But generally, basically what you're doing is you're putting a database together of people that you've done business with in the past, business that uh, you tried to do business with in the past, but it didn't work out, future sales opportunities. And if you start to build that database in a CRM of all the people that you, uh, that you communicate with, that you could do business with, that you have done business with, you're going to start building this, this empire sized database of information where you quickly will realize there's a lot of people out there who might benefit from my services. Even if you're just a striping only company or a ceiling only company, um, just having that database of people can be huge when you're in a moment of like, man, we really need some work here to grow the business. And hopefully you're never in that spot. But if you are, you can go into your CRM and realize Look at all of these people that I've done business with, right? So having a CRM has been game changing for my business. I started it in around 2020 and I'm just opening it up here now, which you won't be able to see on YouTube, but just some of the things that I can grab, uh, grab data from is super helpful as you try to not operate from that mindset of scarcity. So in our CRM, we can look back at every single sales opportunity we've had in this company in the year 2022. So a lot of them are already won. Maybe they're even done. So the project is invoiced. We've got the money. Life is good. Some of them are projects we've won, but we just haven't got to yet or uh, waiting to be completed. But there's also a ton of leads in this year alone, 2022, of opportunities where people came to us or maybe we've tried to do some outbound sales and I've gone to them that are just basically marked as open. So if I'm ever in the position where I I feel like we need work, I have a whole database of people and and leads and opportunities that I can go to, to get that information. And then within the system itself, you can get super, super granular with the kinds of information you put in there. And so what that does is it allows you to build that network so that you don't ever have to like scratch your head wondering where's the next job gonna come from. It's that mindset of like, I need work now that limits the ability for you to grow and scale your company. The scarcity mindset is not an easy one to overcome, but with a couple tactical things that you can do both in how you sell, but also keeping track of your data and your information, uh, preferably like a CRM is a great way of doing that. You can overcome that mindset of operating with, uh, there's not enough work out there, I need work now, which only leads to problems and limits your ability to grow your business. If you have any questions on the scarcity mindset, I would love to chat with you. This is something I struggled with huge, uh, especially when I started the business. But even when the business started to grow in like 2019, 2020, man, I was still, you know, selling projects and talking with people from that mindset of, I need this work. And for me, it was two things. One, I didn't have a CRM or a database of people and clients and leads that I could go to, to to produce some sales. But I was also didn't know my numbers. I didn't have goals and targets for like, how many, how many projects do I even need to sell this year? Like, what is my average project value? Like, do I need these opportunities for the clients that are coming in asking for cheap work? Can I say no to them? Because if you don't have that information, what, what happened to me was I just felt like I needed to do the job. And that really limits your ability to grow the business. So if you have any questions about CRM or scarcity mindset, hit me up. I would love to help. Thank you for listening or watching on YouTube. Appreciate it. Keep your stripes hot. I will talk to you next week.